Finally! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to my competitive Pokemon battling slash building guide, as requested by Sean Arnold of the Arnold's Play. Link is in the description. I expect this to be a three-part series. This first video is going to cover the basics on how to build a competitive Pokemon from scratch. The second video will focus on team building and synergy, and the final video should be about advanced tactics and battle strategies. So one of the most obvious, and arguably the most important starting points, is the typing of your Pokemon. There are a variety of weakness charts available on the internet to be studied, and I would suggest committing them to memory as best as possible, or at least referring back to it as often as possible. Some combinations are fairly obvious, like the ubiquitous fire, water, grass starters, but even as a veteran I tend to forget how things like fairy or ghost interact. Type interactions sometimes change between generations, and once in a great while new types are even introduced. Since new Pokemon items and moves are introduced in each generation, the competitive metagame is constantly evolving. If you plan on trying a retro battle, it would be a good idea to note the history of past generations. Generation 1 had a metagame based on speed, since all critical hits were based on a Pokemon's speed. Generation 2, all the way up to Generation 4, was primarily dominated with stall tactics such as Toxic and Recover. Generation 5 and 6 have finally brought the Hyper Offense, but as expected, it is indeed the most balanced of these iterations. So once you feel confident about the strengths and weaknesses of your chosen Pokemon and know what sort of metagame it will be competing in, the first step to creating your competitive monster usually comes with breeding. Let's take everyone's favorite Pokemon, Blastoise. While he has a decent move selection via level up and TMs, you can actually hatch a Pokemon that knows a move that it couldn't learn any other way. Perhaps you want a bulky wall with Aqua Ring. Take a female Blastoise and combine it with a male Pokemon that learns Aqua Ring by level up and shares an egg group, and your Squirtle will hatch with the selected move. Hatching a Pokemon with an egg move is grand, but you'll likely need to double the world's Squirtle population before getting one that you might consider usable because each Pokemon is born with a set of IVs, or individual values for each stat. Assigned numbers range from 0 to 15 in generations 1 through 3, or 0 to 31 from generation 3 onward. To make our bulky Blastoise, we will need to aim for a 31 in HP, physical defense, special defense, and optionally speed. A minimum of 3 IVs will be passed on from both parents, but they can be applied more than once for a given stat. For the sake of argument, let's say both parents have all 31 IVs in all 6 stats. And instead of these stats being applied to our chosen HP and defenses, the game will sometimes apply the three parent IVs to the same stat, making it seem like only one IV had been passed down. Then the remaining five to three IVs will be chosen randomly. In addition to IVs, there are 25 different natures that manipulate the stats of a Pokemon. One stat will be increased and one stat will be decreased. There are also uh, five natures that don't do anything at all, However, those are not the best. For our defensive Blastoise, we are going to be going for a Bold Nature, which decreases the attack stat and increases the defense stat. This can be a frustrating process. Eventually, the Pokemon Checker will inform you that you found a Pokemon with amazing potential and IVs in all the right places. Thank Arceus. The next step is much less time consuming, so feel free to celebrate. Once you have passed the IV tribulation, you will need to apply EVs or effort values. A Pokemon can have a total of 510 EVs and no more than 255 in a given stat. Every 4 EVs adds a s another stat point at level 100. But wait, 255 isn't divisible by 4. So, to optimize your EVs, a maximum of 252 will allow you to squeeze in one more stat point into a stat of your choice. Blastoise makes a great mixed wall, but again, for simplicity's sake, we will make a physical defender with 252 HP EVs and 252 physical def defense EVs. The remaining six can go into special defense. Every Pokemon defeated has a set amount of EVs attached to it, and any Pokemon that receives experience will receive the full amount of that Pokemon's EVs. Our Squirtle will be spending a lot of time in X and Y on Route 5, defeating Gulpin for 1 HP EV each, 
or Route 10 defeating Nosepass for one defense EV each. Now, defeating 255 of any Pokemon is a massive undertaking, but there are a variety of items that will assist you. One of the most interesting of these tools is Pokerus. This is a virus that has a chance to infect your carry Pokemon after each battle. Pokerus, unlike Poke Aids, is indeed highly sought after since it doubles EVs after each battle. Pokerus can also be stacked with any of the six power items that being the Power Anklet for speed, the Power Band for special defense, the Power Belt for defense, the Power Bracer for attack, or the Power Weight for HP, will add an additional 4 EVs onto every fight. So if you are fighting a Gulpin with a Power Weight attached, this will take the base EVs gained from the fight from 1 to 5. Stacked with Pokerus, the EVs gained will go from 5 to 10. So this cuts down significantly on training time. Defeating 52 Pokemon is cake compared to 510, so it's highly suggested to utilize these tools to cut down on training time. But Dayton, you cry, how do I come upon these tools? Well, the power items are available in the battle subway for 16 battle points apiece, so get ready to do some serious battling in order to get those. And Pokerus is found with a very, very slim chance. I believe it's less than that of a shiny Pokemon, but it does have a chance to infect your lead Pokemon every time you encounter it. Or you can simply trade for it, which is the suggested fashion, as somebody who has found it before has probably infected multiple Pokemon in order to keep it alive. It does expire after one day out of the box, so if you keep the Pokemon in your party, you will need to uh, have have a, a backup, lest the Pokerus be cured and you can no longer spread it anymore. Finally, once your little bruiser is level 100, it is time to bestow a combat item upon him. There are many, many choices uh, for the many, many different types of build. The generally accepted item for a wall to hold would be leftovers. But in addition to leftovers, there are also a variety of berries that can cover some of the weaknesses that maybe your team doesn't cover so well. You can do interesting things like giving him the absorb bulb and switching him in on a water attack, which he won't take much damage from, and then um, that absorb bulb boosts special attacks, so maybe Blastoise can have a bit more of an offensive presence. Or perhaps you uh, really like War Turtle. You can attach an Eviolite to it, and although it won't be effective as a Blastoise, it is uh, a pretty cool novelty. And I really enjoy the different items and just the amount of variety that Pokemon offers. Even if your opponent has perfect 31 IVs, the EV training is extremely important as that will allow you to swing your Pokemon's up, Pokemon stats up by 63 at level 100, which is absolutely huge. So as you can plainly see, it is extremely important to train IVs and EVs uh, if you are going to be battling competitively. If you are playing on something such as Pokemon Showdown, Pokemon Online, then your IVs will probably be set to 31 automatically, so you don't really need to worry about all the breeding and such. But um, I do hope that this video gives you a newfound respect for the breeders who do play Pokemon, because when I was doing it, it was a pretty good pastime for me. Um, although I don't have the time to do it so much these days, I still respect the people who uh, dedicate this sort of time to do such things. So I hope you will join us for the next installment. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free. The comment section is open for your use. And uh, if you did enjoy, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I hope to see you in the next one, friends. Until then. Bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.